So the first thing we're going to do is highlight the different line types that you have on your plan. Uh, so you have to use the grid. So you're going to highlight everything that's parallel to your feature wall with one color. And that'll be going to your left vanishing point. And then everything that's perpendicular to that, you're going to highlight it in, in another color. And then you're going to go ahead and highlight your vanishing point. So it's easy for you to remember which vanishing point you're going to if you refer back to your plan. You can make yourself a little legend. So orange lines will go to the right vanishing point. Pink lines will go to your left vanishing point. We're going to go ahead and draw the dining table first because it's in the foreground. We're going to count from the side wall how many blocks on the floor plan. And then this also correlates to your perspective grid. You're going to count those same number of blocks over. And that means this is where the dining table starts away from that feature wall. So because it's pink, I know that I have to go to the left vanishing point. So I just draw a very long construction line. And now I'm going to be drawing the orange line. So I'm going to count how many over. So that's table length over. But I'm still drawing the pink line. I'm sorry. And then that is the width of the table. Now I'm, I'm going to draw uh, where it starts from the left wall. So I have to count those blocks over make that point and because I'm drawing the orange line I'm going to go to the right vanishing point. So just like we did one point we draw the footprint of everything first. So then you're going to draw the whole length of this table uh, to get to the other end. So you can count the squares on the floor because this is a perspective grid that we've already measured off. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw that line all the way to the back wall because that line going to the back wall is how I'm going to measure the height because this is something that's in the middle of the room. You have to um, go and anchor to the side wall in order to measure the height. So here's a paper underneath so you can see the footprint of it. And then once I'm, I have this footprint and I have an anchoring point, you only need one, you can Remember to extend the four corners, the construction line, so it looks like an upside down table at this point. But you're starting the box, you have the bottom of the box and the sides of the box, but you need the height of the box. So you have to go back to that anchoring point of the wall, measure up, because this is um, going to be a 30 inch high table. So I'm going to that measuring line on the wall. I did a dot at the measuring height, and then I took that dot and brought it back into the room where it intersects your construction lines, your vertical construction lines. And then you can go ahead and finish up the box by using the vanishing points that you already have. So there is my complete dining table box. This is the box that the dining table will be um, within. So if you have legs at the four corners, you can draw that at this point. You can draw the base if it's in the center, but this is the the box for the dining table. Now the next steps are for the dining chairs. You can um, use a different color pencil because this will help you because I've done this so many times I can just use black just regular pencil but sometimes it's helpful to use color pencils for the, like the foreground chairs versus the background chairs. So here I am I'm offsetting using the grid the floor grid the width the dimension of each chair. And because they're all like in a row, I'm going to do all three of these chairs all at one time. So here's, I'm drawing the, the depth of each of these chairs so that um, I'm going to go ahead and do all these chairs in one, uh, using one measuring point. Okay, so all these, you have three footprints of three chairs. There's chair one, chair two, chair three. Okay. Then again, I'm using my vanishing points and I can use the same footprint because I've lined up the chairs for the first three. I can use it to make the back three, the chairs that are on the opposite side of this dining table. 
So that's this will be my third chair right now. So that's why it's important to kind of line up your furniture. Um, you're going to do the depth of this as well. How, count how many squares you have. Now, if you have a dining table that's round, that means every single one of your chairs are going to be a different vanishing point. So you'll have to plot it out like the video that I made for the turn chairs because um, every single chair will have its own vanishing point because it's not parallel nor perpendicular to the back wall. Um, so if you have a round table, a racetrack table, or something like that, that's what you're going to have to do. But this, because is, this is a rectangular table, I can use the vanishing points. Now I'm doing the chairs at the head of the table and the foot of the table. Again, using the floor grid to count off the width of these chairs. I'm doing the width of the chairs because it's pink line, so I'm using the vanishing points to the left. And then the depth I'm using, again, a combination of counting the grid at the base as well as remembering which vanishing point to go to. So this is, I'm using the grid to draw the very back of this chair, the footprint of it, to close that footprint up. And then I'm going to do the head of the table chair on the other side. Okay, so at this point I have the footprint of all eight chairs. So the next thing I want to do is I want to draw the vertical construction lines for all of them. So that means all the back of the chairs and the seat of the chairs. So the back of the chairs, I know it's going to be higher than the seat of the chair. So I can make that very exaggerated. I know that the front of the chairs where the seat is, it's probably going to be about 18 inches, but the back, depending on the height of your overall chair, it's probably going to be much higher than 18 inches. So on the back side, when I draw these vertical extension lines, they're very long because I want to be able to intersect them when I'm drawing it um, the height. So I'm using the footprint of these chairs to go back to the wall because I need to measure it at the back of the wall. So here's my intersection with the wall. Then I'm going to go up. Okay, so this is measuring the height. This is the height of the seat, this dot there. Then I have the overall height of the chair, that dot there. So from that anchoring position, I can take the vanishing point and come back into the room. Now I'm intersecting, here's the seat of this chair. Then the next intersection will be at the height. So I'm just using that as the very back. So if you look at this, this is, visualize this as the profile of the chair. I made a dot for the top of the chair and for the seat level. Okay, I'm gonna stick a piece of paper under here so you can kind of see this is why it's good if you use different colored um, pencils for these chairs so that you don't get confused okay so I'm using the left finishing point to finish off the chair I'm using that measurement line for the seat now I'm using the same measurement a uh, different the height of the chair I'm using that uh, measuring point to finish it off the back of the chair so um, this is kind of what it's going to look like. If you are having trouble seeing each individual chair, I am going to dot this so that you can see chair one, two, three, and four. So you can see the overall height of the chair and you can see the um, profile of the chair seat. I'm going to go ahead and overlay a piece of trace paper so you can see. I'm going to sketch out um, the profile of this chair, um, the seat of this chair, the back of this chair. So now I'm offsetting the thickness of the chair. I'm using the same angle to show the ergonomic slant of the chair, the seat, and the legs, how they flare out. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing to the perimeter of the box, but the seat doesn't all the way, go all the way back to the box, um, but the chair legs go to the back of the box. So remember that when you're drawing, 
you have to look at your reference photo and draw what you see. If, you're, if you're the back of your chair seat is straight up and down, yes, you'll go to the back of this box. But if you can see that there's a slant to the back of the chair, just know the back of your um, um, chair, the top of it will touch the back of the box, but not where the seat is. So you're going to have to look at the reference photo and visualize this. So I'm using the same angle for the back and I'm going to do all three of these chairs at once because it's all in the same row. So I'm using the same basic math. I'm going to see if there's an overlap if I see a little bit of the chair legs. And so you'll look at the chair, uh, the footprint of each chair. I'm doing a quick sketch for the foot, um, not foot, the head, the chair at the head of the table. And this is a different style chair, so this has some arms to it. So again, you're going to do the ergonomic slant, you're going to do the arms, um, you're going to use the vanishing point for the other side of the arm, and then you're going to see the flared out legs, and the leg is just a little bit that's showing. Um, and you're going to use that to draw your chair, and you can do the same thing for the other side. But this is basically how you go about drawing this chair in the middle of the room. So here's trace paper on top so you can see the quick sketch of what it's going to look like. 